Hello YouTube, and welcome back once again to Delirgelid. Now then YouTube, this is a dwarven fortress to be proud of, isn't it? Look at that, we got the temples, we have traps galore, hospitals. But something disturbs me YouTube, it's the fact that we don't currently control the tunnels. There's monsters and corpses walking around out there, it's a hellhole really. And it is our focus for this episode, at this point anyways. Now remember, we once went out into the tunnels, and we now control a small portion of them, to a fair degree anyways. Still that whole issue of the flaming blob in the naturalist quarters here, I'd like to deal with that at some point as well. But I want to start out big. So I've got my sights set upon Zombie Monster Island. Whole bunch of zombie monsters over here, including a couple forgotten beast corpses, which is a bit worrisome. One of whom had deadly blood if I remember correctly. Yeah, this one down here. The enormous feathered earthworm. I don't know if that deadly blood still applies now that it's dead, but I have to imagine it does. I was looking into making soap, but YouTube, that's a pain in the ass. Who makes soap in their fortresses? It seems like such a hassle. I'm not too worried about it anyways. Now then, we have dug this tunnel here right up underneath the zombie monster island, leading to this hall right here. I've got a bunch of my dwarves still working on the windmills at the top of the walls there, and they can continue that while the squads march down here. All of the squads? 40 dwarves? Half of my fortress population? Should I do that? Eh, that might be foolish. I think we'll send down just Moral's fist in the owls. Into this hall right here. And while they're assembling down there, I'm just gonna place one downward staircase right at the top here. That's all we'll need for now and someone is heading to dig it away as we speak. The first of the military dwarves has arrived, carrying a, uh, a pot, it seems. Large orthoclase pot, I'm not sure what he thinks he's gonna do with that exactly. And here comes the rest of the military dwarves, bringing a plethora of items with them. Looks like one of them's carrying some silver bars, another one's carrying a meal. Yes, he brought two plump helmet roasts with him. Who's that? Which dwarf brings two plump helmet roasts with them to battle? Asmel. The knuckle hammer. I feel so good. His lower front teeth is gone. A dwarf who loves to eat and who's missing his teeth. You deserve a nickname. Asmel Gummy. Kick cross dinner. Welcome aboard. Oh god, somebody dug it away already? I wasn't paying attention. God damn it. Alright, um, how the hell did I miss that, YouTube? Everyone, get <laughs> to the fortress. I'm so dumb. Where's that dwarf? Are they up here? They better not be up here. I think they just dug it out and walked back down. Yeah, they're safe now. No worries. Alright, still yourselves, dwarves. Looks like some zombies are gonna be coming in. Or not. Oh, there they are. Elkbird corpse through the door. They are engaged. And it died. There are more coming now. They're all cramming themselves in this staircase. Fight you dwarves! I'm hoping nobody goes up this stairway here. Let's stay down here, guys. Be smart. They appear to be headed back now. Good. Of course, that doorway is blocked open now by a couple of carcasses. I'm not sure if anything else is coming down right now. Oh, looks like there's a troll and a giant ohm coming down. And here they go, giant ohm, fighting it. Still fighting it. And the troll are dead now. Alright YouTube, well that went pretty well, but we've run into a little problem here. There's no more zombies up on the island. Which yeah, sounds like a good thing, but it's not. Because if you look down on the sides here, the forgotten beast zombies are still down in the water. Or one of them anyways. I'm not sure where the other Forgotten Beast is. Now I guess the only option left is to walk my guys over to the edge of the water and entice that Forgotten Beast out of the water so we can kill it. Of course then we run the risk of a dwarf falling into the water while they're fighting it. You may remember that that's exactly how Delair the Razorback died. And although it was awesome and epic, I don't particularly want any of my dwarves to die at this point. So we'll take this one baby step at a time, how about? Alright, you guys, I'm gonna move you up here, up to the top here. We're all gonna be a bunch of smart dwarves and just listen to me, right? Here we see the first dwarf to ever set foot on Zombie Monster Island. Oh shit, I just saw that Forgotten Beast. Where the hell did it go? Oh, there it is. Hey guys, where are, where's the rest of you? Oh my god, you dwarves, why is everyone going home? We have one guy who listened to me. Oh, I don't usually think much. Yeah, that's apparent. You want up here by yourself, dum-dum. Well, let's see if you can take out a Forgotten Beast. Good luck, my friend. Oh, no, she has turned tail and is running down into the fortress, dragging the Forgotten Beast with her. That's what we call tactics right there. I'd love to know what the hell everyone's doing right now. Oh, there it is, YouTube. It's down in the hallway here. Where'd it go? Oh, right, I forgot to think and fly. So it's flying around this 2Z level tall hallway right now. Where the hell are the military dwarves? Yeah, everyone's just leaving, everyone's going home. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. A, B, all of you guys move. Just back up here, back to this little room right here. Please. All right, they're all making their way there, finally. Forgotten Beast is still flying around this hallway here. And here come the dwarves. You guys are gonna be a bunch of smart dwarves, right? There we go, okay. Good dwarves, very smart. They're moving into the hall. The Forgotten Beast is moving towards them, I assume, just above them. They're fighting it. Two dwarves fighting it, four dwarves. Bunch of dwarves and it died. Good, fantastic. It is mangled. All of these corpses are mangled. 
Good, good. Once again, I'm gonna try to send my guys up onto the island. Really, I guess it's a zombie monster peninsula, huh? It's attached at the side. Silly me. And dwarves are out on the island now. Peninsula. Checking the place out. They don't see much, it would seem. Not to say there aren't terrors lurking in the water around them. I could see a cave crocodile corpse there. And an elk bird corpse. A whole bunch of pond grabber corpses, but I don't know if those things can come out on land. Yeah, still a bit dangerous out here, really. I'm gonna send Moral's Fist over to the edge here. Nothing yet. This is pretty dangerous. I don't really like this, honestly. The dwarves are right at the edge now. Iton the Knucklehammer is right next to this water. And right down in that water is an elk bird corpse. I don't know why it's not going after him. Oh, now it's out. They're fighting it. And they killed it. Good. And there's still this cave crocodile corpse over here down to the south. Let's see if we can do the same with him, although this area is kind of a little bit messy. I'm gonna send Moral's Fist down to the bank on the south again. Yep. Oh, there they are. Are they fighting it? They might be fighting it. Yes, they are. Fighting it. Fighting it. Oh, someone just fell in the water. Please don't die, man. They appear to still be fighting the thing. One dwarf is way out in the water right now. I don't know how he got out that far. Who the hell is that? Come on. Aitan. Come on, man. Get out of the water. I don't know if he's struggling to swim or what. I don't know if there's a good way to force him out of the water at this point. You'd think he'd just automatically do it. The knuckle hammer Aitan. He's not going anywhere. Come on, dude. Guess I can't forget that he's wearing a full suit of iron armor as well. Can't be helping matters. Swim, you fool. Oh, oh, he's a little closer. Come on, man. Get up. Almost there. Climb, dude. You could do it. Ah, shit ass, he died. 75 dwarves. And he's gonna come back as a zombie in a second. Well, at least we killed that elk bird corpse in this cave crocodile skeleton over here, huh? I'm gonna shut off the fortress lockdown burrow for now. And I'm gonna try to clean up this island a little bit. As foolish as that may sound. But I'm gonna keep the squads here just in case any more zombies show up. I've got dwarves chopping down trees and hauling away carcasses right now. But the dwarf who drowned came back to life as a zombie just now. Do I send guys over to try to kill him? That may result in another dwarf drowning. I'll give it a minute to see if he comes up by himself. Got some wood dwarves heading down along the southern edge of the island. Peninsula. You know what? I'm gonna risk my military dwarves. I'm gonna send them down there first. Come on, nobody drown, please. Hey, now this idiot, what are you doing? This dwarf here is standing above the water in some branches of the tree that he's trying to cut down. Does that seem smart, dude? Don't do that. Get off with you. Someone was interrupted by the zombie, but it's still down there. Guess I'll move him right up to the edge. Oh my god, somebody went in the water. Rimtar the owl hammer. Get the hell out of the water, my man. Alright, I'll be damned if I'm losing two dwarves in the water like this. He's right at the shore. Okay, he's out, thank god. Ugh. Seriously though? Alright, the zombie dwarf is dead. No worries there anymore. Alrighty then, so now that all the immediate threats are gone, I'm gonna finish chopping down a bunch of these trees and then try to fortify the area just a bit. Just a bit, nothing big. That'll just about do it, YouTube. Zombie Monster Island is now ours. You can see I've built a wooden palisade around the whole thing with fungi wood and tower cap logs. Up here I have a small gate leading to the west with both a bridge to lock it up and some normal doors, just in case. I put a couple of our bauxite statues of unnaturally contorted corpses out here, just kind of to mark it as our place. I've got an orthoclase road being put down as we speak, and in these stalactites here, I've dug little stairways up and made tiny little rooms, and up at the top of the southern one, I made a little lookout area with a door blocking it up. The northern one's a bit larger and has full rooms in there. I'm not sure what I'm not doing here yet, but I gotta put something in here. Maybe some nice windows or something to look out into the underground depths. But yes, I think we can call Zombie Monster Island claimed now. And while the dwarves complete the finishing touches, I think we should pick out a new target. And I'd be so bold as to say that this cavern layer is under our control now, at least for the most part. But there's still other cavern layers we haven't even been to yet. If we head downwards, we have this level here. Another watery, cavern, honeycomb sort of hellhole. And this place in my mind is famous for its crundle pieces. There are pieces of crundle all over the place, just squirming around. Those little bastards have been getting ripped apart left and right since the very beginning of the game. And every single one of those pieces has come back to life down here. Now truthfully YouTube, I'm a little nervous about coming down to this level just because of the amount of water and crundle pieces. Every single one of those little buggers could cause one of my dwarves to fall into the water. So I think the smartest way to go about this is to make a tunnel downwards here from this level that we've already claimed. Down, 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 down to here and then make a bunch of little separate tunnels leading off to these different little land areas and just break into one at a time. Kill everything that lurks on one of these land areas and then move on to the next. Just gotta wait for those dwarves to dig that tunnel first. Well here's something YouTube. Zan Nightcrawler Konosigar, the Dirtbeard, has withdrawn from society. She's been in the fortress for a long time. I'm curious to see what she makes. Zan Nightcrawler Konosigar, the Dirtbeard, has created Mafolkatak, a giant black bear leather... Chaus? Chausa? 
I'm not too sure how to pronounce that, but I believe it's some sort of leather armor for the legs. Chamber scaly. Fairly simple. Giant black bear leather chouse. It is studded with gold and encircled with bands of giant chipmunk leather and sasquatch leather. Awesome. This object menaces with spikes of orthoclase. On the item is an image of two white millet plants in giant black bear leather. Kind of weird. You know, it's the simple artifacts that really get me going. They seem practical, usable. I like that. Very cool. Now, throw I'm not going to say that anymore. I feel like the whole throw it in the pile and get back to work thing has really run its course. While the dwarves are getting those lower tunnels dug out, I figured I'd come up to this level and do a little something with it. It's kind of been sitting for so long, it's a shame to not do anything with it. You can see I've already built a fungi wood palisade around the area, as well as a couple entrances with bridges and bauxite statues of unnaturally contorted corpses. I'm also placing a couple groups of cage traps out here, just in the hopes that one day we can capture some sort of underground creature and train it. That'd be pretty cool. Also, there's this area here. This is the area we had to drain back in the day so we could reclaim Asteshtalon. I think I'm gonna fill it with water again. Make a little pond area. That'd be kind of neat. Looks like the traders have arrived once more. I haven't traded much in the past few years, and people have suggested that that might be why I haven't had any migrants lately. So this time, I'm gonna do a bunch of trading with them, just to see if that can start things back up again. We'll trade a bunch of food and cloth, and let's see what we can get for it. We'll get some glass, just in case somebody has a strange mood. And not that we need it, but we'll get a bunch of drinks too. A bunch of large gems. We don't really have a use for them, but I like the things, so I'm going to take all those. And a variety of meat couldn't hurt. A bunch of exotic above-ground crops. And we'll finish it off with some nice parchment. You know, something kind of odd I noticed, they haven't brought any cloth or leather with them. I don't know why that would be. Normally they have a ton of that stuff. Here you go, enjoy. And you know what, as a little thank you, I'm going to throw in this finished goods bin full of gold crafts. Make sure the queen gets it. Put in a good word for us. Thank you very much. Those migrants will be dying to get here now. Well, hopefully not dying, but like, you know, you know what I mean. Still trying to get this little pond area filled with water. You can see down here I built a little wall just to contain the water. And over on this side here I built a little tunnel and I left these two spaces at the end, one of which I'm going to put a fortification in. And after that's in place, I'm going to dig away this one by making a channel above. I also put a couple statues out here on these little pillars, so they'll be sticking up out of the water when it gets filled up. There's statues of Delair the Razorback, who drowned in this very area, the Forgotten Beast that she killed, Lysivy, and then a golden statue of Asteshtalon. And while that pond gets finished up, let's take a look down at our lower tunnels to access the next cavern level. They're nice and smoothed up at this point, quite spacious as well, and I suppose we're ready to do this. So I'm going to call down the squads, just Morals, Fists, and the Owls again, just down to this little area right here, and I'll wait for them to get into place before I break into this cavern. Alright, the squads look ready, time to do this. I just ordered one little hole to be dug for them to get through. We are exposed. Sometimes you expose yourself like that and the zombies come directly for you. That Crundle zombie was right around the corner there, and knew right when we broke through. Everything else is just kind of standing around. Well, I'm gonna move these guys out here for now. I don't see anything else dangerous out there. And you know, while I have these squads out here, I'm gonna do the same exact thing here that I did on Zombie Monster Peninsula. Yeah, I'm gonna go make this whole area a bit more spacious. Far too cramped. I'm gonna leave just a ridge of wall around the outside of it to act as a natural barrier. And instead of just mining, I'm gonna have my dwarves make ramps so we can also dig out this layer above us as well. The more room, the better. Get all these trees chopped down. Just like that. Now I've got a feeling this is going to get pretty darn dangerous, YouTube. I've got my hopes up, but I don't know. We'll just have to keep on the lookout, I guess. Oh, another Crundle incoming. Fighting with a miner. I don't know how my dwarves are moving around like that. I think they're clinging to the cave walls. Oh, what the hell is this miner doing, YouTube? Ezum the Tunneler. What the hell are you doing, Ez? Don't go out there, you idiot. Why is this dwarf here crawling along the side of the wall? And this one up here, why is he doing the same? He should be trying to escape, right? Not crawling out on a wall into the caves, it doesn't make any sense. I guess I'm just gonna turn the fortress lockdown burrow on and hope he gets back there. No, just going going farther out. Yeah, he appears to be just crawling out into the caves now, farther and farther. Oh, she's fallen and she's in the water now. Now she's moving away from the shore, moving farther out into the water, it would seem. I'm not too sure what the uh, the end game is here. In the meantime, Errol Ugashlolak, the woods dwarf, and Alehound has created Emalural Mingtuthkur, a willow grate. Sounds boring, let's take a look. Sensed clothes, the contingent eye. It is encrusted with round sandstone cabicons, decorated with beak dog bone, and encircled with bands of willow. This object is adorned with hanging rings of morion, and menaces with spikes of willow, glum prong, sheep wool, and gold. On it is an image of Rhythm Thunders, the giant rat, and Cybrak the Unbreakable, in gold. Cybrak is striking down the giant rat, and there's also an image of dwarves in gold. The dwarves are laboring relating to the foundation of Delarshalid here. Very interesting, very interesting. Anywho, back to this Stupid drowning dwarf. And she died. Great. 74 dwarves, YouTube. Oh my god, and this guy over here. Where are you going? Oh 
my god, with this shit, YouTube. Muffcat, the owl hammer, why are you crawling out into the caves? It doesn't even make any sense. Where, where's the logic, my friend? Being chased by a crundle corpse. Did she kill him? Where the hell did they go? Well, it looks like she fell down into the water along with those crundles. And maybe she got her footing and then fought him off or something? And it looks like she's crawling back to the fortress now. Oh my god, you dwarves. It appears as if she's satisfied, just kind of sitting amongst these spider webs above the water in this narrow little tunnel. She's pretty beat up. And she's the mother of Bim the Hardened. Tell you what, I'm gonna give you a nickname and my blessing, Muffcat. How about Muffcat the Addled? Based on her poor decisions as of late. Well, luck be with you, Muffcat. Uh, bad stuff here, YouTube. Real... Real bad. Moral the crocodile has climbed out into the caves. Pretty disheartening. He's getting chased by a crundle and taking some big hits. He's lost some teeth already. Come on, come back to the fort, dude. He's still fighting. He's enraged currently. I turned on the burrow hoping he'd come back, but he's not. Going further out into the caves, he has fallen and is down in the water now. YouTube. Still in the water. Why is he not coming back? I mean, there's a path open for him. And he has died. YouTube, he's dead. I don't even know what to say right now, honestly. He's lasted so long and then he died in such a stupid fashion. I guess there's not much you can do about it, huh? Suffice it to say that I'm actually extremely pissed. Down to 73 dwarves now, YouTube. And we no longer have a duke. I mean, that's a serious flaw in my opinion. Normally I like to turn the little bugs and stuff around and be like, oh, there was a reason for that if you look at it this way. But I mean, you can only do it so much. Why the hell are all my dwarves crawling out into the tunnels? It makes this sort of tunnel here absolutely useless if they do that sort of shit. Why would I ever come out here if my dwarves are just gonna climb out on walls and kill themselves? <sighs> I guess I'll just assume it has something to do with them panicking and thinking that going out into the tunnels is the best option. Although that doesn't really make any sense. Why the hell is this warrior out here stuck in a tree? I am currently trying to rescue her by the way. Am I gonna lose more dwarves if I try that? Could be. I mean, I guess if I was going to put a twist on it, I could say that's something to do with the caverns of confusion, that gas that lurks in there and confuses my dwarves and causes them to do ridiculous things, maybe seeped down here? Really the best I could do. I could think of no other reason why dwarves would be doing this. Oh boy. Well, no changing the way things are, right? Let's make up another gold statue, shall we? Statue of Moral the Crocodile. And we'll get that statue in place in the memorial hall here, in the Hall of Heroes. Alright, there's another dwarf going out there. This is ridiculous. I'll tell you what, no more goddamn tunnels, it's not worth it, I don't care about the tunnels anymore, we're not going out there. That's it. Everyone get to the fortress, everyone go, right now, to the fortress. Oh my god, this is Zuglar Firebelly Dereros. This is ridiculous, okay. Apparently there's some, some bad magic, or some, uh, some sort of confusing gas in these tunnels. That's really the only explanation I could see for my dwarves to be going out into the tunnels like this. Does anyone else have this problem? Anyone? I don't recall ever hearing anything about this, like people complaining about this sort of a problem. Oh, this is actually a uh, Ingish Scar of Aldecost, one of our old mares, out here fighting with Moral the Crocodile's zombie, and he's now drowning. YouTube, this is screwed up. 72 dwarves now. Zuglar Firebelly de la Rose has died. Ingish is making his way for the fortress, being chased by Moral the Crocodile's corpse. And he's good, he's on land. He's safe. He's running around like a schmuck. Where the hell are you going, dude? Ingish continued running up into the fortress, but we managed to catch Moral the Crocodile's corpse. I'm gonna put a couple doors right here, and I'm not gonna let anybody go down into the lower caverns anymore. That's it. No more of that crap. I'm also having these dwarves here make a little tunnel so we can try to save that one warrior stuck out in the caves. Oh my god, who's now crawling away from the place that they've been for like 10 minutes. What is going on around here, YouTube? What the hell does this dwarf want from me? All right, stop making this tunnel. Carve out this one little piece right here. And hopefully this dwarf stays here long enough. Digging it away. And coming in the fortress. Okay, they're in. Damn it all, YouTube. This is a ridiculous episode. There we are. We got those doors in place. And nobody is allowed out in the tunnels anymore. That's it. And so ends any expeditions down into the caves. This kind of cave anyways. I mean, we could take out hundreds upon hundreds of goblins at a time, but god forbid there's a little bit of water. Then we're screwed. 72 dwarves right now. And don't mistake my calm demeanor for not being pissed at the fact that I had to lose so many dwarves this episode for such ridiculous reasons. It's like I got so pissed that I've, like, transcended to a new level. And I'm no longer pissed. I'm not even mad anymore. We're just gonna have to move on like we always have. We're survivors here in Delashalid. We're not going anywhere. Looks like the new leader of the fortress is Rimtar. Touch handle. The one who was elected mayor last episode. We'll have to hope she does a good job. Here we have it, YouTube, the new shrine to Moral the Crocodile, Ath Serengiz, the Duke of Delairshalid. Complete with a gold statue of Moral embracing a goose. 
a finely chiseled memorial slab, and the body of Moral himself. Kind of grim, but you know, I'm sick of dwarves dying in stupid fashion, so I figured if his wailing corpse is left up here, it'll serve as a constant reminder to what can happen to a dwarf if they're not always vigilant. It's what he would have wanted. Of that, I'm sure. Alright, YouTube, it seems my focus for this episode has changed quite a bit. I have no interest in going down in those tunnels anymore. That being said, I'm not sure what my next task should be. Oh, great balanced beard, please guide me in this unbalanced time. Be my scale perfectly equal. May my course be equal and balanced, as you are always, by the great balanced beard. Well, I'm definitely going to hold off exploring those tunnels anymore, and I'll just do some work up top here for now. We still have all these windmills I'm trying to get into place, and they're coming along rather nice. And maybe I should start a construction out here. Hmm, that sounds like a plan. You know, YouTube, I'm feeling a little disheartened after the loss of our Duke, Moral. I mean, I, I don't know what the deal is now. Do we get another Duke at some point? Well, hold on a second. We got a Lore Konadvutak, who is apparently the Duchess of Steel Clutches, the Grim Fortress of Conquerors. She doesn't live here. Who the hell is this person? Someone who's the new appointed leader? That's not right. All right, so we can't go in the tunnels anymore. That's out of the question. I guess we could dig down deeper to see if there's a better cave farther down. That's not totally out of the question. And really all this side stuff that we're doing is just because we're waiting for the goblins to return. But it's been several years now. I don't know what the holdup is, but I guess we'll keep waiting. You think maybe it has something to do with the fact that I raised the cap of invaders that are allowed to attack the fortress at once? They have not attacked since I raised that cap. Well, I was hoping to have one gigantic siege, but I mean, small sieges are better than nothing. Of course, a 120 goblin siege isn't exactly small. Alright, there we go. I just decreased that cap back down to the default 120. I don't know if that'll do anything, but I guess we'll see. You can see over here this pond area is starting to fill in, very slowly, mind you. And you know, since I guess we're not going down to those tunnels anymore, we should make sure these ones are fully under our control. And this blobby bastard in here has really been bothering me. And I've got an idea how to take him out. First, I'm going to start off by making a little chamber above this blob. Like, directly above him. I'm going to make a little stairway out here. And I'm going to carve out an equal size chamber above that one. And do the same at the top as well. Three levels just like this right above that blob and actually this middle level i'm going to keep this center block as a wall i'll go into more detail when it's all set up zaset ulabsalan the iron tamer has created kugshilkas a spiked iron ball let's take a look the worthless quietness worthless more of this damn artifact should have that in the name. It is encrusted with round tetrahedrite cabicons, studded with iron, and encircled with bands of oval cobaltite cabicons. This object is adorned with hanging rings of cheap leather and menaces with spikes of giant bat leather, tetrahedrite, and dog bone. On the items, an image of mantis men in tower cap. Mantis men. Very odd choice. Alright, YouTube just finished up this Forgotten Beast Destruction Device, or FBDD, as we've been calling it here. Now, let's take a look here. See, this is the bottom level. Then above that, nine more spaces with just a section of wall right in the middle. And then above that, a support holding that section of wall in place. I don't know if this will work. I have no idea. All I know is at one point in the past, I had dropped a section of wall onto a space of flooring and the wall went straight through. That support up there is linked up to this lever. So when it's pulled, this section of wall right here is going to fall down onto this floor and hopefully pass through the floor and crush this forgotten beast. This might work, it might not. I haven't looked into it, but I guess we'll find out together. All right, the lever is set to be pulled. The lever is pulled. I don't know if anything happened. It did not pass through. Oh, wait, or maybe it did pass through. Sweet. Oh yeah, would you look at that? Passed straight through, killing the forgotten beast. Guess I could have done that a long time ago, huh? Well, I suppose the naturalists can have their quarters back. That worked out pretty well. I'm glad something worked out well this episode. Oh, there it is, YouTube. I just carved away that chunk of stone and its corpse was actually beneath it, which I did not think would be the case. I kind of panicked for a second when I saw it. I figured it would have just been destroyed. Well, pretty neat. Moral Zalistamos, the tunneler, has created Kabnanshat Vitekigal, a slate coffin. Name bewitched, the targets of trapping. It is encrusted with oval slate capicons, studded with copper and encircled with bands of copper, dog bone, hoary marmot leather, and pigtail. This object menaces with spikes of clear tourmaline. On the item is an image of goblins and dwarves in purple spinal. The goblins are fighting with the dwarves. The artwork relates to the attack on the bloody conqueror of the foggy books at Steel Clutches the Grim Fortress of Conquerors by the Nightmare of Webbing in the early winter of 1024 during Dotomatosp, the Bloody Siege. Very interesting. 1024, eh? I was thinking 1024 wasn't too long ago, but it was actually seven years ago. Time is flying, YouTube. 
The construction up here is coming along. I'm not going to get into too much details with it right as of yet. And same goes with those windmills, just getting those in place as we speak. Still no sign of the goblins. It's a bit distressing, really. I was hoping to turn this world around, make it the age of the dwarves, but if they never show up, then I don't know what we could do about it. Well, YouTube, it's been a full year since the merchants last arrived. We still have not yet gotten a migrant wave. Even though we did trade a ton with them. I'm not sure what's up with that, but I don't think we're getting migrants anymore. We've had no fortress births. We're down to 72 dwarves. We are dwindling. Mistem Aslanal, the dirtbeard, has created Udashetbeth. <laughs> Oh my god. Udas Shetbeth Thistunga cast. A pond grabber leather backpack. That sounds awesome. Let's see. Men twinkled the goldenrod skewers. Oh my. It is decorated with giant black bear leather and pigtail and encircled with bands of cushioned amethyst capicons and gold. This object is adorned with hanging rings of giant red squirrel leather and menaces with spikes of pigtail. On the item is an image of single cut gems in pond grabber leather. On the item is an image of rectangular cabicon in goshenite. On the item is an image of smooth pebbles in diorite. On the item is an image of dwarves in alpaca wool. Interesting. Got a whole goddamn array of different materials on here. A bit jumbled, really. Oh well. Now, I'm sure you can tell by the amount of artifacts that are being made that I'm kind of just waiting around at this point, waiting for the goblins to return. They seem to have no interest. Can't really say I blame them. Not after their crippling defeats the last time they came. Oh my god, YouTube, finally! A vile force of darkness has arrived. That is fantastic. I honestly did not expect them to come before the end of the episode. Goblins, trolls, beak dogs, and even what looks to be a troll spearman. I guess we'll assume that this is the leader. I know there's usually one individual who leads a siege like this, and it's probably this troll, honestly. Totally badass. Now we're getting to the end of this episode. We'll have to see how far we can get with this, I guess. Fortress lockdown. I'm gonna have to redo this burrow real quick. Alright, that'll about do it. And a strange thing here, YouTube, while I was modifying that burrow, I noticed we have a bunch of giant cave swallows in cages. Six of them currently. When the hell did that happen? I never saw us catch a single one. Pretty cool, though. Certainly some potential there. Better than ravens, in my opinion. Alright, fortress lockdown is all set. Everyone to the burrow. What shit, before I do that, I should close up these tunnels here. I don't want the goblins to escape through the caves if they do try to run away. Oh yeah, a whole bunch of beak dogs. This is gonna be another big one, I'm sure. You may notice I've already blocked up the north hall there. I don't want them going through there. As effective as it is, I really want to see that water trap do its work. Plus, I gotta check out that new animal pen. They haven't even seen it yet. Yeah, they're gonna have to go down to the south and through these gates down here. So that'll take a bit. Alright, tunnels are all locked up. I'm gonna turn that burrow on once more, and I really hope no dwarves are out here. And if there are, may the balanced beard have mercy on their souls. Yeah, it's a big siege, alright. Beak dogs, each mounted with a goblin. Whole bunch of trolls. Fairly typical big siege stuff. Except for the fact that they're seemingly being led by a troll spearman. He must be a wily one. Let's take a look at him. Ivire, the troll spearman. Incredibly skinny, his gray fur is extremely long. His nose bridge is concave. His splayed out tall ears have nearly fused lobes. He has a broad chin. His thin irised black eyes are close set. He has a high voice. Weird. His head is somewhat short, his skin is black. Very cool. There are already a couple trolls making good progress towards the fortress. Not yet in the fortress grounds though. We gotta get these bridges here closed up so nobody can get in the fortress other than through the water trap room. The northwest and south halls are all closed up now, as well as this bridge down here leading towards the refuse area. So now only the main gate is open. And I'm also having someone pull the trap hall maze lever. And remember, we're not going to see a difference between when these bridges are up and down because they're just one space wide. So we're just going to have to assume that they're all up and in place. I did test it back in the day, so there shouldn't be a problem. And actually, I just noticed that we're missing a segment of bridge in here, which is pretty annoying. But we can throw up a wall in that place just real quick and that should solve the problem. It seems that the majority of the trolls have met up in the green hall and in the golden cudgel up top and are destroying tables and all sorts of stuff, ripping doors off hinges. Annoying. While the majority of the goblin hordes work their way around the wall, slowly. And here comes a dwarf to put that section of wall in place. There we go. All set. We are good to go, YouTube. The goblin hordes have made it into the fortress grounds through the southern gate. Their leader stands back a ways. Maybe he senses danger. Who knows? Who cares? The main force has entered the courtyard. A few big dogs and goblins have already started to head down the stairs into the fortress. You know, I'm willing to bet that none of these invaders will survive this. I'm fairly confident in that, actually. But I guess there's no use in being cocky at this point. The stairwell is currently packed with the hooting masses of goblins and beak dogs. You can imagine their shrieks echoing off the walls. The first of the invaders has reached the bottom of the stairs and is headed towards the fortress. 
a beak dog, followed by a goblin. They move forward towards the yawning abyss, their war cries giving them foolishly misguided courage. Perhaps they think they'll win this day. They will not. Because this is Delairshalid, and it is also a cliffhanger. We'll have to wait and see how this pans out next week, YouTube. But I'll tell you what, I'll guarantee next episode is goddamn exciting. No goblins will survive this siege. And we do this for the name of Delairshalid, for the great balanced beard in the sky, and for every dwarf we've lost thus far. Kivish, Moral, countless others. Nobody defeats Delairshalid. And until next time, YouTube.